Let's work on the power today. Welcome by Retro Machines. My name is Victor Bart, and we're gonna work on my rack and especially the power system of it. In the bottom of the rack we have an APC Smart UPS 3000 and the batteries are broken so we're gonna replace the batteries in this video. And this rack has the power distribution unit in it. So we're gonna also see how that works and connect it. The wall socket in this room didn't have an earth pin so we replaced this uh, wall socket with this one with an earth pin and also we made an earth cable to it and we are going to make a second socket next to it so i have four outputs uh, for the server the power in this room is 230 volts with 16 amps together with the rack i cut some cables including this one as main power lines to the rack i bought some brand new cables with uh, connectors that are uh, just uh, factory made instead of user made. Here on the rear of the rack we have uh, 4 C20 inputs. So the total groups of this rack with the two power bars is 4 groups. But we don't gonna use 4 groups. I can still work like it like 4 separate groups but on one power line. So what I gonna do is one of the groups will be connected to the UPS with this uh, short cable and I already connected it here to the uh, cable management bar so it's nice and sturdy. This part of the bar will uh, be on the UPS power so I have 12 sockets uh, with UPS backup. The other one will be just plugged into the main wall so I have 12 sockets that are from the main wall and the other two for now I don't gonna use them but later I gonna use them for this bar for the like the retro servers or uh, servers like that because here you have the controller units with on and off switches so I can turn on and off the power bars in the rear so if I have retro servers that I only uh, run when I use them I can put them on a separate uh, power button so when not in use I can just power it off completely let's remove one of the power distribution units because they are quite huge they are really big units here on the side uh, with also the cables from uh, the power connectors down there and really big custom cables to the two power bars. I really like this heavy duty power distribution system. I bought a keystone patch panel because I gonna make some uh, cable runs here in the home. But probably most of the runs will be just cut 5E because I have a lot of cut 5E still here. And most of the connections are connections to a TV, a printer, my father's PC or not that important connections because the important connection from my rack to my uh, main workstation is on fiber. And I can always uh, put in CAT 6 a cables later in the home if I really need it. But for now I will just use CAT 5E and probably will get some... Uh, cut 5e keystones for it and some cat 6 press tools and i already cut some cut 6 keystones from a friend the ups batteries are broken i plugged in the ups for like 12 hours or something and then i put the apple x serve as a load on the ups pulled out the cable and it was immediately shut down from both the ups and the server so i let the ups recharge a bit tried it again but without turning on the server but still the power supply of the Apple X server is running when you plug in the power so it's using a little bit of power then I pulled uh, out the power plug and uh, it got like 40 seconds before it was dead so let's uh, replace the batteries in this UPS but that is quite easy because when we remove the front panel we have here the battery pack and we don't have to uh, pull out the whole UPS out of the rack. So here's a really big connector uh, to disconnect the batteries and then with a screwdriver you can simply remove the unit. The battery pack is like 18 kilos so be really careful when pulling it out.
I must warn you, working on UPSs can be really dangerous. This battery packs for example 48 volts and if you short it out you can seriously burn your fingers off. And also inside of the UPS there are really dangerous components. So if you have no experience with batteries and power stuff, please ask someone uh, with knowledge before you gonna do this. And be really careful while doing it. I bought replacement batteries and in this unit we have 8 batteries and they are 12 volt 5 ampere. So we have the 8 batteries here, always check on white stuff around it because then they are leaking and that can damage metal and power lines and everything. And if you are replacing a leaking battery and you need to clean under it for example, just clean it with water. So we have 2 packs of batteries, 4 are in series and uh, the 2 packs are together in parallel to this connector so we have 48 volts. Here we have the fuse with two black cables to here and here. So let's first remove that because that is the minus of the batteries. And if we break that connection, uh, the two battery banks are separated from each other. The battery banks are per side and this red wire is the positive line. So let's disconnect that. And now we can simply swap per battery, so we disconnect one cable connected to the new battery, then the next cable, next battery and so on, so we don't mix any cables up. So let's repeat it for the other side. Everything looks fine and I have 51 volt out of the connector so that uh, is uh, correct. So let's install the top plate again and we can put it back in the UPS. Let's reconnect the battery pack. Time to plug in the UPS. The UPS is now charging because the batteries when you buy them there's charge in them but they are not fully charged. I will let it charge for a few hours now then I will do the same test with the X server can as the load on the UPS. And if everything is successful and working, then I will put my main server on it and get it in production. A note about the old batteries. Don't throw them away or dump them. Uh, bring them at least to the recycle station. But you can better bring them to like a metal scrapper. Because the batteries are full of lead, I can get 40 cents a kilo of when I bring them in. So they are still worth a little bit of money. The UPS charged the batteries and it's now powering the power distribution unit because the LEDs are on. So let's turn it on. So it's connected to power bar B and that is this unit. And here you can see the LEDs that these sockets are now active. So let's take a cable and put it in the Apple XServe. And the XServe is now in standby mode. And the fan is spinning. Let's disconnect the hard drives. Let's do a power failure. Okay, this is how it should work. The beeping and it's still turned on and it's making noise because of the fans and the cooling. The new batteries in the UPS are working, so uh, time to plug in the power cable again. Yep, 
and it gives now the status LED that it is on net power. I powered down the server so let us remove the current power cables and also this awesome data protector I'm gonna remove it because everything will go to the original power distribution system. We need C13 extension cables to connect uh, the servers and switches to the power bar. And this is an original sun cable with a nice angled connector here. And this is a nice short one for the server. And because the server can slide out we need to have some slack here in the cable. I connected the switch, the router and the file server to this power bar here that's connected to the UPS. So from here to here it's on the UPS and these 12 sockets are just directly plugged into the wall. The server is now running, connected to the UPS in the bottom. I got some comments about the power consumption of the rack and stuff like that. But I can fill it up. And if I don't turn things on, it won't use power. For example, this is my backup server and it will only go on when I make a backup. And after that I shut it off, so no power usage. The Apple X server down in the bottom is only a machine to play with and make videos with, but not a 24 7 machine. So if I don't turn it on, it won't use power. Yeah, that's pretty simple and I will put more servers and stuff in it, but also I only turn it on when I play with it because the file server is 24 7, the switch is 24 7 and the router is 24 7 and the UPS is 24 7 and the rest is only extras. Oh, and I picked up a server today. W stay here, I will get it. If you have a sun rack, you need sun hardware. And I was looking around for spark system, like a quad spark and stuff like that. And I couldn't find it. But what I found is a Sunfire X2100 M2 server, 1U. And I paid 10 euros for it. So I got this from my Patreon money this month. So thank you Patreon supporters for this nice sun machine. And it has two hard drives and it comes from a student home and it's really close in this corner. I don't want to know what happened with this machine. I really need to clean it and of course I will make a video of this machine. If we take a look at the inside we see it only has one CPU and this is a dual core Opteron. It has now 3 GB of memory, but I have a set of 8 GB for this machine. We have two PCIe A time slots here, uh, two hard drives, SATA hard drives or SAS if you put in a controller. It has a quad network card, so yeah, a basic but nice machine. And it's really nice to see how the Sun X86 platform is. Because it supports Linux, Windows, Solaris, all kinds of operating systems. So it's not locked down to a Solaris. And I probably will put in a SCSI card and I will connect this very heavy unit to it. This is a Dell Powervolt 210S and it has... 12 18 gigabyte 10 RPM SCSI hard drives and I really need a machine to drive this and I think the Sunfire is a good candidate to have uh, so much disk and then with ZFS and SCSI hard drives that will make a really interesting configuration and also I probably will replace 18 gigabyte hard drives from this shelf for 300 gigabyte SCSI hard drives and this one is getting really heavy Thanks for watching, please like and share this video, subscribe and leave a comment. You can join Retro Machines on Facebook or you can support me monthly on Patreon so I can buy more servers like this Sunfire. And you can use my Amazon affiliated links and follow me on Twitter.